Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and uh, welcome to this uh, Bergeron Briefs episode. In this episode, um, we have an expert, Linda Thalheimer, uh, who is going to be talking to you a little bit about long-term care insurance. Uh, so I'm often, when I talk to clients, there's no spokes now, I do nothing but elder law, I'm dealing with these issues all the time, and this question always comes up, how do we try to deal with if somebody either needs nursing home care or needs a lot of care at home in order to avoid going to a nursing home? And for those of you who can, in specific situations, I really suggest one of the things you've got to talk to about is whether long-term care insurance solves this problem. So I asked Linda to join me to talk about that. Linda, can you just give the folks who are watching a little background about, about you and how you ended up doing this uh, and about kind of the, who, you, who you typically see as a long-term care insurance applicant and, and, and what their issues tend to be. And then we can kind of go from Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So my name, as, as you mentioned, is Linda Tallheimer. I've been specializing in long-term care insurance for over 23 years. My background is that I'm an occupational therapist. I have my master's in healthcare administration, and I transitioned from healthcare into long-term care insurance when I saw the challenges of, of uh, the nursing home setting that they were becoming more challenging settings to provide uh, you know, the real high level quality of care. And so my clients are people who tend to be planners um, or have seen the high costs of care. And they're trying to figure out how do we stay in our homes longer and better? And how do we afford the very expensive cost of long-term care, giving us more choices and options um, in, in a, a more cost-effective way? That's a, that's, a, that's a wonderful quick quick summary. And so let's, let's just kind of talk about um, a couple of things. The first, I know when people hear long-term care insurance, they're thinking nursing homes. How do we make sure that I've covered for the nursing home costs? And they're not often not thinking about the cost of not being in the nursing home, the co which, because of, which is everybody's last possibility. Oh my God, keep me out of a nursing home, right? Um, and so, and so for those folks, can you talk about what, what that long-term care policy might offer in terms of home care, in terms of dealing with assisted livings? Can you just kind of talk about that for a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. So I actually call long-term care insurance, nursing home avoidance policies. Nobody <laughs> wants to go to a nursing home. And the reality is that the nursing home is where people go when they don't have any money. Those are the settings that are covered by Medicaid. Home care and assisted living are private pay settings, generally speaking, and they are very expensive. So, if, for example, in Massachusetts, the average cost in home care is about $37 an hour. You can't get anyone to walk into your house for one hour of care. It will be a minimum of four. So you're talking about you know, $4,300 a month just to get one hour of care in home care. And I usually tell people this is the most important amount of money for a long-term care policy to cover because when you need care and you know you need an hour, an hour and a half of care and you have to pay four hours of care, people say, you know, I'll just do it myself. And, and that is the beginning of the end because families get overwhelmed and then people end up in facility settings sooner than, than they would otherwise. So having that opportunity to, to quickly access care, stay in their homes longer and better is great. Um, assisted living's expensive, right? So we're looking at averages in Massachusetts about $6,500 a month. You know, the nicer ones up around 75, 8,000. And if it's a dementia unit, it's not unusual to find them at $11,000 a month. So- Very close to the cost of nursing home care, right? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I tell people that the, you know, if in the ultimate planning, it is to uh, set yourself up so that you can go to an assisted living and supplement your care and stay out of nursing homes, right? Because nursing homes have become places for the very sick and the very poor, which is not a good financial mix. Right, right. And, the, you know, the, the, as I spoke to, spoken to people about, and I remember thinking about it for myself, you know, because I say to myself, I have, I have, so I'm the last of six kids. I have, there, I have a, one, my oldest sister died of cancer a couple of years ago, but she was, would have been 89. My next sister is in a nursing home right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then and he's, she's in her mid eighties. My next brother should be in an, or would be in a nursing home, except that he's at home. 
because his wife is taking care of him, but it's really hard. They don't have a lot of resources and they hate to be, and it's a finite pile of resources. So they're trying to figure out how to manage. She doesn't want him to end up in a nursing home, but she's killing herself. And I, and I, I regularly talk to my clients. I say, you know, when you have a husband who's, or a spouse who is going through this, the last thing, the worst thing you can do for that spouse is die. If you die, your spouse at that point is A, really going to be depressed that you're not there, and B, is definitely going to a nursing home. And, 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 and when I also kind of talked to him about the fact that, you know, the thing about the nursing home care is that it inevitably, there are, there are practically no singles in a nursing home. So that to the extent that an important part of your life is your privacy, right? In the best nursing home, you can't get it. You know, because you're in a double and you're, you know, the other person has got their own lives and people are coming in. So trying to figure out how to do this home, the, the home pieces are really, really important, right? Now, Absolutely. Now, can you, yeah. can, you know, one, one of the things that people get concerned about, though, when they're talking about the long-term care insurance, of course, we're always talking about, A, can I really qualify? And then B, aren't the premiums going to kill me, right? So can you, can you just, can you talk a little Absolutely. bit about that? Right. Absolutely. So let's talk about the the additional protections that long term care insurance provides. Most people aren't aware that a very small policy, two uh, years, one hundred thirty dollars a day, no inflation, even up to a, a year of elimination period um, for a 55 year old couple who is not in fantastic health. You know, they get a little high blood pressure, a little anxiety. They might have had a hip replacement. One hundred dollars a month for the couple. So we're talking very, very little money to get a long-term care policy to provide a catastrophic protection, which is the protection of your home in Massachusetts. And by the way, that's a, that's, a, that's, other... a great, that's a great example. I do a lot of work um, in my own area in Metro West, but I do a lot of work in the island on Nantucket and not Martha's Vineyard, a lot. And I tell yeah. people, houses are worth $2 million, you know, and, and, and but I tell people, you get this little policy. And now your house is safe. It may be that your other assets may be exposed, but you're not your house, you know? Yeah, so and so in, um, so actually uh, it was in uh, 1995, I believe that the, um, uh, in two, I'm sorry, excuse me, 2005, that the, um, the, the law changed a little, a little bit so you can't hide everything in your house. It's a graduating, increasing number in your house. It's, uh, it's about $890,000 that is protected in a primary home. And the reason for that was just as you were saying, many people were throwing all their money into a home to, to, to hide it. So they are, uh, they are trying to cap it, but still it's a huge protection. And if you have any people in, in, the, in the surrounding states, like Rhode Island, uh, you know, for example, uh, Connecticut, there are partnership policies, which you can protect dollar for dollar. So every dollar you receive from your policy is protected um, against your estate. Um, one of the other things that I think is important is a lot of people are concerned about the cost. And what I tell people is this, is that, you know, this is all about leveraging. The insurance companies are looking at 100,000 people in a room and they're saying, how many of these people are going to end up in claim and for how long? So there's no question that putting money into a long-term care policy is going to be the strongest, strongest leveraging of your money as opposed to an investment. Um, and for those who are concerned that they may put money into a policy and not use it, we have hybrid policies that return the premium. And interestingly, those policies have reduced significantly. In fact, one of those hybrid companies have reduced 24% in the last few months due to the high interest rates. So there's no better time to be looking into hybrids with this return of premium. And within the last month, we have the first hybrid cash policy shared. So that means that you could have, for example, eight years of coverage between a couple. First one can use all of it. First one could use nothing. Everything's left to the air. And if no one uses it, the whole premium or greater than the premium is left to the heirs. Tax-free. That's pretty wonderful. Yeah, that's a pretty wonderful policy. So can you talk a little bit about eligibility? I know the one, the first issue yeah. that people talk about is premium. The other issue is how could I possibly qualify? You know, and, and, and just talk about... So is, is there a magic age above which this is really out of the question at this point for you to get a long-term care insurance policy? No, age is the, the least of my concerns. Um, so we're really talking about uh, 18 to 84 at, off, uh, as, as an opportunity. The biggest thing we worry about is health and health does decrease your opportunities. Although I do have an 83 year old who just received a, got a policy. So um, the, the key is that 
I always tell people the younger, the better. For those people who have lots of money and planning on leaving money in a state, I encourage them to get a long-term care policy for their kids while their kids are young and healthy as, as a part of estate planning. And they can, you know, they can pay it up in a single pay or over 10 years. And, uh, but in terms of this insurability, there are home care policies that are not insurance that I help people with that provide home care with no insurability at all, as long as you are independent with your daily living skills, your community living skills, and you're still driving. So as long as you can do all those things, you could have a mild dementia, you could have MS, you could have Parkinson's, you could have had a stroke, but as long as in those that moment that you're signing, you are independent, you can still get that that home care policy. That's a yeah. huge, that's a big, big deal. Because I often, I, once again, I'm often talking to folks who are saying, if you're a couple and one of you needs to qualify for mass health because you're in the nursing home, I, we can shift assets around. We can get you qualified into like all cases, right? The, yeah. the, 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 the issue though is, and that there is, a, I tell them, there is a mass health program that will help you try to stay home, the, the frail little waiver program, right? But the problem in that case is that you're so constrained in terms of the caregivers you could get because you're stuck right. with only the caregivers who have signed on with the regional uh, ACE, the regional aging services access point, as opposed to you really being able to find any caregiver that kind of works for you, right? Yeah. But I had no idea until you just said that, that there existed a policy that could deal with those issues that didn't have the kinds of more serious constra uh, eligibility constraints to them. That a long-term care insurance policy might have. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, these policies start much earlier um, than long-term care. So, um, you know, for example, I, I got this policy uh, from my father-in-law when he was uh, 85 years old, and he started to access benefits at 88 and used them until he was 90. And so the, the definition is just that you need help. So these are really designed around keeping people in their own home, um, shopping, laundry, uh, food prep, money management. I mean, uh, yeah, it could be money management. It can be um, food uh, preparation, uh, and then gradually increasing to the daily living skills and um, as well. So I, I try to, to tell people when I'm talking to them about this whole cluster of issues, I say, look, your attorney isn't going to be the expert on this. You know, it's like when people look for me for financial advice, I'm going like wrong person. You know, I understand a little chunk of the world, this elder law, I don't understand that. So and, and so I just really try to encourage them to just to talk to somebody, right? So, right. Do, you, do, you, so do, do you find yourself just, it, it, it obviously doesn't cost anything to talk to you, right? And, no. and, are, and are you, um, do you t have people like just from all over or are you in a specific geographical area yourself? No. Yeah, so um, so I, I live in Massachusetts, but I am a national expert in long-term care, and I um, provide long-term care uh, education as well as as right people across the entire United States, and um, and so right. I'm actually so, a trainer for agents, <laughs> so as well. That's great. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do, and I know that I, you know we'll we'll put up a slide at the end of this, right, and and so we'll, that'll have your contact information that for folks. They may want to just talk to you about to get more information. But in the meantime, can you just give folks, you know, so once again, a lot of my clients, they're still emailing like, yeah, maybe, right? So can you just talk about a phone number? What is the best number to reach? You? Sure, sure. So the best number to reach me at is 617-201-2499. And an easy way to remember me is to think about long life planning. If you're going to live a long life, you need to plan. So longlifeplanning.com and all my information will be there. And they can also click on a link and schedule a time. And uh, But feel free to email or text uh, or call. I'm, I'm open. And I do uh, love educating people and helping you make an informed decision with regards to long-term care planning. So Linda, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. So folks, once again, this is the point about long-term care insurance is like, you know, you call and you check on it and stuff. And, you know, if you get turned down, it isn't like they're going to sue you. You know, you just get turned down. You just no, right? So you have to check this out. This is an important piece of how you may want to think about really protecting your assets for your family. That's really the goal of this is to make sure that after you die, that, you're, you, that the family gets the assets and not just home, just care providers. So thank you very much for watching. Linda, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, and Thank folks, you. I hope you enjoy this and 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 check my website, my my uh, YouTube channel once again, Elder Law Frank and Mary. 
to look for other Bergeron Reefs episodes that it may be of interest to you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you so much.